I'm Randy Friedlander. I'm a client services director here at Abaji Robotic Systems. Uh, I started my career as a chemical engineer in the petroleum refining and petrochemical industry. My name is David Suttle. I'm the chief revenue officer here at Abaji Robotic Systems. I started in uh, welding and large structures right out of the University of Ohio State, uh, working for the Department of Defense down in Norfolk Naval Shipyard and uh, have been in automation and welding ever since. It was quite a few years ago. Since that time, I've also worked for companies like Reliance Electric in the automation and weight control systems, the Edison Welding Institute, and then uh, some other robotic companies that might also be here at the show. Well, I've worked in a variety of manufacturing industries. I started to get involved in robotics and automation about three years ago when I was working at the Edison Welding Institute. And we were working with private sector companies to determine how can they automate some of their processes, including welding. My first experiences in robotics were many years ago in doing custom automation lines for AC-DC variable speed drive systems that were really designed for the food service industry. So a lot of process management, a lot of process control for food production, uh, and also then materials in, in grain and uh, aggregate. We would design those systems. Typically it was on some pretty rudimentary things by today's standards, because everything has evolved in such a way that it's a lot easier to program, it's a lot easier to set up. And today we actually have systems that allow you to do robotics without programming. What's exciting about being part of Abaji is we've created a technology that does things that people need but can't do today. So in many industries, they have been slow to adopt robotics because the difficulty of programming a high mix or even custom fabricated products is just too burdensome and difficult and costly. Uh, even with the advent of cobots, there's still programming to be done and many companies just lack the resources and, and, the, and the talent that's required to do that programming. Avaji eliminates that problem altogether. So it's exciting to be able to bring our solution to these uh, manufacturers who are so desperate to overcome the challenges they have with uh, workforce availability and uh, lack of talent. And so customers are coming to us that are really excited about how we might be able to help solve their problems. And that's been very gratifying to me. With a system like ours, one of the things that's really beneficial is now you don't have to have perfect parts, you don't have to have a perfect position, you don't have to invest in fixtures, in elaborate fixtures like you had in robotics for the last you know, few decades. In the automotive industry, they've really perfected robotics, but they're also doing the same part over and over and over again, which is not representative of a lot of the manufacturing facilities today. You want to be able to do almost custom. All you need is a 3D drawing to start off with, you load it into the system, point and click, and from there you can start the weld. Many companies who are looking at robotics are doing this for the first time. It's not something they're accustomed to buying. And so to them, it's kind of a leap of faith and they need to have some confidence that it's a positive decision and it's going to work out in, in a positive way for their company. And the ways to do that is to estimate the ROI, the return on investment of the robotics investment. So the ways you do that are, well, there are a number of tools for that. The ways you do that is you look at the marginal reduction in cost and you compare that to the investment. And you do that over a period of time accounting for inflation. And so the ROI model will tell you, is this an, is this an attractive investment? and how does it measure up to other options you may be looking at. For the Abaji Robotic Systems, that ROI is usually very strong. Uh, in terms of payback, it's often between 18 and, and 36 months, which for most manufacturers is exciting. So let's examine some of the parts that some our current customers are doing today. Uh, augers are a good example. When you would try to do an auger in a traditional industrial robotic application, the XYZ coordinates on a helical structure, like an auger, is sometimes very difficult because for every few inches you're having to set speed and feed and XYZ coordinates. It can take a very long time. By incorporating artificial intelligence in a 3D model, if you have a step file and you load it into the system, it's one click to do the entire seam all the way down the shaft. 
Flights typically aren't perfect when they are hand formed or machine formed, they have some deviations. So as they get applied to the shaft, there's some inconsistencies on those seams, which again, if you were doing with a teach pendant, all those inconsistencies have to be correctly put into the system from the programming aspect so the trajectory of the weld path will be correct. You, you don't have to worry about any of those things with our system. Again, step file, load it in, click on that one seam that's the entire continuous seam down the auger and it'll make a beautiful weld. Some other parts to think about beyond just uh, an auger could be even like aluminum boxes, thin sheet material, things that you might have thought about doing a TIG weld can now be done with MIG welding and the right uh, weld parameters and weld settings and applied to the robotics as well. So you have the flexibility of even designing a system that can do steel and aluminum all in the same cell. So if you've got a mix in your environment, that can be accommodated very easily. Quite often, uh, applications that we see from our customers require some sort of adaptive welding, or even uh, sometimes referred to as a plug weld, which isn't a very elegant weld, but it has a lot of things to accommodate for. Depending on how the hole or the slot is created, uh, plasma cut, sometimes even hand cut, you'll have a little bit of deviation of where it's located, and then also a deviation about the actual uh, size of the hole. Uh, by scanning it, we recognize exactly what the part looks like compared to the model. Models are always perfect, parts are not. So when we do a comparison between the two, we recognize those deviations and we can put it right into the path plan and allow for the system to do it all for you. Now an adaptive weld process like that, you're doing multiple passes. With our system, that's again, just simply clicking on how many passes you wish to, to execute on that weld and it'll do it for you with all the path planning built into it automatically. So here at Abaji, one of the things that makes us stronger is the fact that we have two different teams. We have our young folks that are really uh, focused on artificial intelligence and automation and robotic engineering. And then we have some of us that are a little bit older that have more experience in welding and manufacturing. So you put the two together and what you end up with is a very strong offering to put in front of our clients because those types of experiences they may not have internally. I've worked with a number of companies in my career. What stands out about the team at Abaji is a combination of youth and enthusiasm and, and a positivity along with the experience of a more senior members of our staff like myself who can help translate the needs of our clients and understand their perspectives and their point of view into how do we make the solution work for them. So really acting as a bridge between the enthusiasm, the creativity and the positivity of our technical staff and making that a successful solution to implement for our customers.